Avoid these financial advisors. All right, so yesterday I did a video on the simplest retirement equation, and one guy posted a, a comment. And my, my premise is uh, I was surprised that uh, there's a course coming out, and I, and I'm very, I know the people doing the course, and I find that I, I hold them in highest esteem. And I, but I, I looked at the, uh, the, int- the uh, table of contents, and there was hardly any discussion on, on expenses. And, and I would say that shocks me, but it doesn't because a lot of financial advisors, if very, very few actually talk about expenses at all, not to the extent they talk about investments. Let's put it that way. I mean, I'm not saying no one talks about expenses. However, the focus is on investments as opposed to the focus being on investments, uh, as, as opposed to the focus where it should be, which is on expenses. You can't have a financial plan until you know what your expenses are. There's all there is to it. And if you just kind of poo-poo your expenses, you know, I assume it's going to be sixty thousand a year. Well, you got to dig, dig deeper than that. That's not that's not the right answer. Why do we think that? And then what's it going to do? What? How are we going to project on the future? All right. So this guy, and he goes, I've never met a financial advisor who hasn't talked expenses. He goes, and by the way, you're wrong on Social Security colas. It's only averaged one point three percent in the last t- uh, ten years. And the minute this guy said, I've never met a financial advisor who doesn't talk about expenses, I knew he was in the business. It was just funny because uh, if, you're, <laughs> if you're a client of financial advisors, advisors in the plural, and you said you've never met a financial advisor who doesn't talk about expenses, that means <laughs> you're, not, you're, you're defending them, but you've been to multiple financial advisors. So I knew this guy was in the business. And I said, okay. Social Security cost of living adjustments 1.3% over the last 10 years, which is what this guy states. And I said, uh, all right, so uh, <laughs> and I asked him, I said, what do you use for, uh, uh, for, for CMS? Because I bet he doesn't know what CMS is, actually. Yeah, I said, so what do you use for CMS studies because, or CMS because healthcare expenses are projected at 5%. So if you don't want to use a trustee's report for Social Security, what do you use for, uh, for healthcare projections expenses? And uh, because it's odd to me that a financial advisor would not use Social Security projections, but they would turn around and use other projections, uh, the Fidelity study, uh, things like that for, uh, for cost exp- of uh, health care and retirement. You need $286,000. That doesn't include, oh, guess who's taking a little grump? Hold on just a second. There, good boy, Pablo. Hold on just a second. Let me please this up. Good boy. So I'm not going to show you that. Uh, just let's say it this way. A dog just pooped, and you can imagine what that looked like. And a 12-pound dog pooping, and these poops are on the big side. There you go. Good boy. All right, hold on a second there, dog man. Well, you want to go in the woods there a little bit? Okay. Hold on a sec. I'll take you through there. I'll just leave that. We'll go in the woods. I'll take Pablo in the woods here. All right. Anyway, so let's go keep going to this. So uh, he wrote back to me. He goes, I just use reality. I use numbers based on reality. All right, so here's what you need to avoid, my friends. He uses numbers based on reality. Remember, financial planning is about projecting into the future. It's not about the past. It's about projecting, which means you have to have projections in which to make your assumptions. There's no two ways around that. So if you're using the last 10 years to project your cost of living adjustments for Social Security, I got no qualm with that. But then, as I asked him, are you using the last 10 years of Medicare increase, increases? All right. Or we could go back and say, what are, I could say, why not use last year? Because last year, Part B went from 134 to 135.50. It literally went up all of $1.50 for Medicare Part B. Oh, no, I don't use that. Why? Why not use last year's at one, was that 1.12% increase for Social Security? It's like 2.8 or something like that. Why not use that? Well, because that's not reality. It is absolutely. He didn't say that. I'm just I'm putting words in his mouth. I get that. But it is reality. It literally is. Last year, Medicare Part B went from 134 to 135. Now, I have no idea what Medicare Part B has gone over the last 10 years. And I don't want to say I don't care. But at the end of the day, as it is, it's historical knowledge. It doesn't mean anything in the future. So what I use... I use what Social Security trustees say, and I use what CMS says. CMS is Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And I use their projections because they're the closest thing we're going to have to any kind of their expert opinion 
but their closest thing we're going to have to reality because that's what their trustees report are based on in terms of Social Security being solvent, Medicare being solvent, all that. Not to use that. I, you don't have to use it, but then you got to say, okay, not only am I not using Social Security trustees report, but I'm not going to use Medicare trustees report either. I don't get, I, I, well, I, this is why financials you should avoid. You should avoid the financial advisor who just pulls stuff out of their butt. So I'm not going to use the Social Security trustees report. Instead, I'm going to use 1.3% because that's what the average coal, coal has been over the last 10 years. All right. So then I say, well, what are you using for Medicare or health insurance as a whole? I don't care. What are you using for the premium increases there? All right. And I would use Medicare Part B. That's what uh, everyone has once they hit 65. And that's what most, you know, almost all retirees are going to have. So that would be what you'd need to use as your projections. And you could use the last 10 years. That's fine. So we're going to use Social Security for the last 10 years. I could look at this. Let's, we're out in the woods here. Isn't that beautiful? And so if you're going to use Social Security for the last 10 years... I would, you would have to, in my opinion, if you're going to be legit, use Medicare for the last 10 years. And I literally have no clue what it is. But then I say, okay, so let's just say we're going to use those two numbers. What are we going to use for bonds? Uh, because if you're losing use of the last 10 years uh, for, for uh, Medicare and Social Security, don't you have to use the last 10 years for bonds to be consistent? What are you going to use for stocks? Are you going to use the last 10 years of stocks to be consistent? No, you're going to use... I mean, what, <laughs> Where does the list stop, man? Uh, <laughs> just think about that. We're going to use the last 10 years for stocks as our number because uh, yeah, that's what that's an average of the last 10, and we can we can forward project that in the future. Uh, how ins was that? The stocks have averaged 15% a year. So we're going to use a 15% forward projection because that's what's been over the last 10 years. That's the same scenario of saying we're going to use 1.3% COA because that's what's been over the last 10 years. We're going to use, I don't even know what Medicare is, 2% increase in Medicare because that's what's been over the last 10 years. And again, Medicare, I'm talking about Part B, Part B only. Uh, we're going to use, uh, and if you want to use Part C, which is Medicare Advantage, <laughs> more power to you. I just say you got to be consistent. Then I'm going to say we're going to use whatever bonds have done over the last 10 years, not much. Uh, you know, let's say 2%. All right, so we'll say 2% bonds and a 15% stocks. No one would say that makes any sense. Not one person is going to say that makes sense. So if that doesn't make sense to use stocks and bonds for the last 10 years, why does it make sense to go against the, what Social Security trustees say uh, to use their projections? It doesn't make any sense. Now, you might not like the projections. That's fine. You don't have to use it, but you got to be consistent. So if you're not going to use Social Security adjustments of, of uh, 2.6 and you're going to use 1.3 instead, then you have to inevitably reduce your cost of living adjustments for um, for medicare you, you, but what they're going to do is they're going to use a low trust a low social security cost of living and a high increase a high increase in uh in uh, medicare because that is the risk that everyone's afraid of and that's what financial advisors many of them are uh, are geared to scare you into it's like oh my goodness health insurance is going to kill us all we're not going to be able to afford it it's just nuts. But again, I don't care about Obamacare. I'm not talking about... A, a, for, look at this, man. Just, oh, gosh. And this is just a tiny little... It's just a tiny little... Uh, I, I don't even know if I call that a lake. I guess a tiny little lake. It's just behind. So my house is up. There's a little, uh, a little bit of a ridge line up there. My house is on the other side of that ridge line. I've actually walked through here a couple times. It's fun. This first time I've actually taken Pablo down here, though, it just occurred to me uh, I could take him in the woods. He likes it because he. I had to chase him through my backwoods. I got about an acre of a wood line behind me, and uh, had to chase him back there this afternoon. And I didn't realize he'd like it. So, oh man, we got some fishies out there, big man. Anyway, so if you're going to use Social Security like that, I. So I, what do you do? You say, okay, Mister, Mrs. Mister Financial Advisor. What are you going to use for future projections and why? That's what I want to know. And, it, you know, look, again, if I say always, if they hem and haw, that means they haven't thought it out because they weren't expecting to be challenged on this. And if they don't know, that's, that's just silly. They say, well, Fidelity has a study of $286,000 for health care, and that does not include long-term care. So uh, you only have $171,000 saved. So, you, you're, you know, basically you better keep working your crappy old job and save, save, save. Uh, that's not the right answer. I've talked about that before in my book, You Can Retire on Social Security, and many other videos. That's a silly, silly, silly analysis of health care costs in retirement. 
to say I need a lump sum today to afford health care costs for retirement, and that does not include long-term care. Part two, I'm only going to use a 1.3% Social Security, but I am going to use a 5.5% Medicare increase. Why? Why? Uh, I'm going to use... <laughs> A 10% stock return because stocks have historically averaged 10% to 1926. And I say, what do you use for bonds then? I use a 6% bonds because bonds have historically averaged uh, that since 1926. That's just, that's, that's weak ass stuff. Pardon my French. That's weak. And that's over projecting returns on, ec- on bonds and stocks because that allows them, allows them to easier represent their fee in there. If you're getting 10% a year and uh, they're charging 1% fee, it's a whole lot less damaging than if you're getting 5% a year and they're charging 1% fee. See how that works? But you still need to get returns, pretty significant returns, because the cost of health care is going way through the roof and no one can afford it. Ah! And then on top of that, the Social Security is only going to give you 1.3% a year return. Ah! Watch out, man. Watch out for these financial advisors. If you're talking to them, just say, how are you getting your projections? I just... I'm not always saying be a, you know, an ass about it. Just say, how are you doing that? Where are these projections coming from? Ugh. Where's your Monte Carlo coming from, by the way? Well, you've got a Monte Carlo that says 100% return. Is that net of taxes? Uh, okay. Is it net of your fees? Uh, okay. What is going into the projections so that you get that Monte Carlo? Huh? Uh, you know what's funny about this, the woods of Georgia? It's just, you know, there's probably... It was a Sherman. Did he go through? I mean, because we're right north of Atlanta. I don't know if Sherman's troops went through these woods right here or not. But, you know, there's, it's just amazing, like, the history. I was down at Georgia Tech yesterday with uh, um, Liam and I. Uh, Cab and I went to a, a Georgia Tech game. We met Maddie down there to take her out to dinner. We saw some place where, like, right downtown, you know, they had a, uh, a plaque representing that uh, Sherman's troop has gone through Atlanta right there. And I, you know, they, they parked, you know, they parked right there and, and bivouacked. Uh, you're thinking that like now it's a, you know, it's a big, you know, cosmopolitan um, freaking city. But, you know, a hundred, it's only hundred, no, 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 150 years ago. There was like literally Sir, Sherman's troops right there. I just, I find it incredible. And we got this big old, uh, this is interesting. Check this out. Look at this. Wow. Is that an old basement of some sort look at that man that is crazy it's like an old uh foundation maybe what is that that is nuts can y'all see that it's like blair rich project if it's got dark back here you ever seen that movie that movie's scary i mean it's a good scare i got frightened by that but i've been startled whoa 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 what's up dog what you hearing oh probably seeing somebody out here right, come here buddy it's okay look at this right here well it's okay bud it's like an old house, old foundation, something. Looks like they got some sump pump right there. Looks like they got a sump pump down there. That's nuts. Is that a water tank? Oh, buddy. It's okay, big man. Oh, hey, how are you? I'm just 